When I saw that eye, I knew I could do something about it. So with a light box, a catheter, and five ophthalmologists looking over my shoulder, I was able to perform his surgery. At the end, the next day, he looked excellent and we saved his sight. So we call glaucoma the sneak thief of sight. And that's the reason, because it's a silent disease. It damages your neurons and your optic nerve, and you don't really know what's happening for the vast majority of people. So cure glaucoma to me is all about catching that thief, putting them away. Our goal is to allow somebody to keep useful vision so they function the best they can throughout their life. And if we accomplish that, that's, that's unbelievably exciting. But we do tell patients, listen, we don't always win, but most of the time we do. For me, it probably started, you know, 10 years ago. And I, I would, um, initially a friend of mine had called me to say, come go on a mission trip. And I, I said, okay, well, let's go. And I, I didn't really know what to expect. The third day into this visit, this lady comes in and she's been led in by her daughter. I had this little portable slit lamp that I was using and the daughter helped her to sit down. And I took a look in her eyes. Um, she had really high pressures. Her nerve was copped out. And um, she was blind in both eyes. And uh, for a second there, I, um, I, I just sat back and I said to her, I said, well, lady, you know, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do for you. Singularly, that changed mm. me. She fell on the floor, and in her native language, she started to wail. She had this, she just, it was so agonizing, everybody started to cry. I just joined them. Her daughter who came with her, um, you know, Everybody was crying, the whole room. She said her life was over, and it really was, in a country where there's no support, where there's no other options, where that means your life is finished and everybody else who is supposed to help you can't make a living because they have to stay with you. So I said to her daughter, I gathered myself, and I said to her daughter, I said, um, you take a seat, let me take a look. And she was probably in her 20s, 22, 23. I took a look in this young girl's eyes. She was almost copped out, and she also had a pressure in the 30s and the 40s. And, um, you know, by this time I had help. Uh, they had calmed the lady down, and, and I said to her, I said, I couldn't help you. I didn't get here soon enough, but at least maybe we can help your daughter. She has glaucoma too. She's 20-something. She will go blind. That was something to do. Now, 10 years down the road, um, you know, there's cure glaucoma, and um, there are uh, procedures, like uh, practices worked on a procedure called the GAT procedure. And a year ago, I went back on a different mission trip, a mission trip where I, 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 I went to, and I left with hope. I, I left feeling that I had done a good service, not just hand people drops. Um, that girl is probably, I don't know, she's from a village, couldn't afford, probably couldn't afford her medicines. Maybe she's blind now. But, and I wish this happened 10 years ago, but this is what we have. But I think from now on, going forward, it will be different. And it will be different because of what we plan to do with Kia Glaucoma. That's what it means to me. One person at a time. Hopefully in teaching that one person, she'll teach another person and she'll treat a thousand people. And in, in going and doing for one person, uh, you're hoping that, um, I look at that little boy now and I, I don't know what he's gonna be tomorrow, but hopefully it'll be something better than he would have been. And I think that that should be enough. And if you're blind in the US, you have a seeing eye dog, you have crosswalks, you have social services, I can help you. But if you're blind in a small village in India or a small village in Africa, there are no crosswalks. There are no seeing eye dogs. You have a seeing eye child. And what typically happens is the grandson or the son 
will lead the father or the grandfather around. And so you, you're you depriving the grandfather or the father of being a productive member of society. And then you're also depriving this, you know, five or ten year old boy of a childhood. And with one surgery to restore that vision, you're giving two people their lives back. People are going blind. And we're not like the other doctors that are trying to improve vision. We're trying to save vision so you don't lose vision. And that's a hard thing to deal with because we don't always win. And having new procedures and new techniques is hopeful for us. And it gives us hope that, hey, we've got options here. We're not going to be living in the past. I tell people it's not like getting your appendix out where you go get your appendix out and you're done in a few days and you get better. Well, we're hoping that our new surgery, the GAT surgery, and all the surgeries that we can hopefully develop over the future will be a lot less labor intensive and more like that appendix where you can get fixed and get gone. All my, all my children, of course, have had to go, you know, to different doctors and different uh, doctors to, to take care of their glaucoma. And, and so far, you know, if, if if the research continues to to help with glaucoma, it would be so great. Dr. Grover was very concerned and said, we need to get him into surgery now. <laughs> so um, he, I mean, I think his pressures were like in the 30s, almost to the 40s. So he was on, he said if we would have waited any longer, he could have lost his sight. Yeah, I mean, he saved my life, or my eyesight, pretty much. I was just really scared, like I didn't know what they were going to do. Well, I mean, I remember telling my mom that are they going to like cut my eye out and put some stuff in it or something like that, <laughs> but they said no, they're not going to do that. Our first one was a stepfather. Father. I probably wouldn't be even seeing right now, I mean, I, I was, I, my pressures were at like 40, you know, mm -hmm. and thanks to the, uh, I mean, the, uh, the surgery, uh, I'm at 10, no medications for three years, which is amazing because I've been, I've had glaucoma since I was 15. My, my heart is pounding and then I, I see it come around and we, we complete the surgery, open up your own drain, 360 degrees without having you really touched the, the, the white part of the eye. And uh, we, Dr. Fum and I, we have our masks, you, know, you can't see your face, you have the masks on, you have the hat on. We look at each other, our eyes are just, you know, in disbelief. And uh, we, <laughs> we give each other a little like sterile fist bump. <laughs> Heard of the term, I thought old people get it. That's, that's just what I thought. I had no idea that an infant could, could have it. So yeah. And we saw Dr. Smith and as soon as she looked at it, it was just, she said, okay, we have to get her into surgery. I actually, I talk to a lot of women now. They see Oakley's glasses and they say, how do they know at that age? You know, if there if there's a problem, so I tell her story, and I just um, I tell the moms if you ever are concerned, if you have a, you know any question that your child might be having eye problems, just go. Because like Oakley, she could have been blind. Now you can see what I'm doing. I mean, uh, look at me, what what I'm doing. This was not really possible before. You know, I could do it, but not that. When you see clearly, your speed goes fast and everything is different. Everything is different. I um, had a lady come in with very advanced glaucoma in both eyes, very poor vision in both eyes. And I had asked her, are you planning on staying with us? Or are you going to go back to the practice that sent you over? And she said, oh, nobody sent me over. I uh, actually heard about you guys through a bingo tournament that I was involved in. I just heard about how great you guys are. And I thought that I would come and look. And my other doctor said that there's nothing to do for me anymore. And I thought I'd come here and see what you guys have to offer because I'm not seeing well, I'm not doing well as far as a vision standpoint. I told her, you know what, I probably can't make your vision better, but what I can work with you with is to prevent it from getting worse. And we can work together for the next 20 or 30 years, however long you're gonna be with us, to make sure that the vision you have now, that you're able to still play bingo with. Something else needs to be done, and that goes back to, to this fund. And I think that's one of the reasons it's so very important, because we have to get to people earlier, get them access to treatment, and we have to keep pushing to get better and better treatments. We know knowledge, knowledge is one thing, but collective knowledge is very potent. 
It's very powerful. And that's what hopefully will take glaucoma care to the next level. And like Dr. Butler said, one person is not going to cure glaucoma. Our mission at Cure Glaucoma to fund transformational research, global missions, and providing access to quality care is incomplete without your help. We need to depend on you to help us by making a donation because every day counts. Please go to www.cureglaucoma.org to learn more about the cause and to make a donation. Join us as we change sight one person at a time. Oakley, if you can look over here. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. I wish that would work with adults. <laughs> <laughs> Oakley's a necklace. Put it on. Oh, nice. So pretty. Oh, wow. You are going to be missy. Nice. Look at you. Nice. <laughs>